Rain, rain, rain. All right, so obviously I'm not in my studio. Back, I'm back on the Texas Gulf Coast uh, in the West Columbia area. And if you live along the Gulf Coast, you know that it has been raining nonstop all week, and it probably won't let up till Tuesday. So I was actually on my way to do an on the water video, but uh, I was trying to avoid some range storms and stuff, but it, it it's just not gonna happen today. It keeps raining, and I don't want to get all my camera gear wet and everything else. And uh, so I'm gonna go over lures that will help you when you're fishing in the rain. So like I said, it's been raining all week and it probably won't stop until around Tuesday. So if you're looking for something to do, there's the uh, Gotfish Expo going on at the Galveston County Fairgrounds. And what it is, it's a bunch of different fishing vendors, uh, different products and stuff. A lot of discounts will be going on there. So if you're looking for something to do, uh, fishing related, and if you can't fish in the rain, then I would highly suggest going to that. All right, so let's talk about fishing in the rain and why it can be successful. So if you know what barometric pressure is, it's basically the air pressure in the sky. Uh, when the sky is completely blue and no clouds in sight, that is high pressure. Uh, when the sky is overcasted, a lot of clouds, a little gloomy, that is a low pressure. And a lot of times low pressure can be a lot more successful than high pressure. Don't ask me why, I don't know all the technical terms to it, but it just seems to me when it's completely bluebird sky, a lot of the fish are more skittish and don't want to eat as much as when it's overcast. And when it's overcast, you can use a topwater all day and I feel like the fish are a lot more active during the uh, overcast and low pressure. So why does that tie into fishing in the rain? So when it's raining, the barometric pressure is actually constantly rising and lowering. And what that does is that really, kind of confuses the fish a little bit uh, but it really helps increase the bite sometimes whether you know it or not um, but it is gonna be more of a low pressure so those fish will be active now things that you want to avoid if it is raining and you decide you want to go fishing while it's raining is you want to make sure there are there's no lightning no thunderstorms and you want to make sure that you're always wearing your safety gear um, I highly advise you not to go fishing if there's any bad, bad, bad weather coming through. But if it's like a little uh, rainstorms and stuff, go ahead and go fishing. Uh, tournament fishers fishing this crap all the time. Uh, it, it's it's doable. Uh, if you're a really hardcore fisherman, you want to go get on a good bite, you can. Uh, but like I said, uh, just make sure you have all your safety gear on you and take all the safety precautions in order to stay safe on the water. All right, so let's talk about the lures that you're going to want to use when training. So no matter what you use, you want a lure that's going to be loud and sets apart from the weather that's on top of the water. Uh, that rain is going to create a lot of noise onto that water and it's going to be a lot harder to distinguish your lure from uh, the weather on top. So if you're just using a regular jig head and soft lure, attach one of these little chatter weights to them. It can be very helpful. Um, they have loops on both sides so you can attach your braid to one side, your mono on the other, and to your jig head. And what it is, is it just has a lot of uh, little beads inside of it that create a noise that really sets apart from everything else that's going on and it can be helpful when you're just using a soft lure. I don't have one on me but in my topwater video I went over wake baits and basically what that is is it's like kind of like a saltwater chatterbait, uh, not chatterbait, crankbait, but it will create a lot of movement in the water and sound and I'll actually have a picture of it right here. Um, all you have to do is just reel it in. You have to do no type of technique to it and it'll do all the work for you and what, those can be very helpful in the rain. Now a soft lure that can be really helpful is these little knocking tails that I have advertised on here uh, quite a few times. I'm not anyway affiliated with knocking tail lures. I have no sponsorships but this guy can be very helpful due to the fact it has a rattle in the tail. Um, you can just use it like a regular lure. I mean, you, don't, you can twitch it, you can just slowly retrieve it. Anything you wanna do, you can't really use this lure wrong, uh, but it, it can be very helpful due to the fact that it has uh, good movement and noise when you use it. Also, another thing that can be very helpful, a popping cork. I don't have one on me right now. I'll, of course, I'll put one right here. Uh, showing you what a popping cork is, but those can be very helpful to the, due to the fact that they make lots of noise 
uh, they make a lot of movement and uh, you can just use that on top of your soft lure, uh, bait, whatever you're using, they can be very helpful. And last but not least, a top water. Now I've gone over these top waters many times, but these can be a very key lure due to the fact that they make a lot of noise and movement on top of the water. And especially if you use one of those ones that have a popper, I'll put a picture of it right here. But um, these guys you can definitely use in the water when it's raining to create a lot of noise and movement. And uh, it can be a very successful lure if you're out there when it's raining. All right, I hope this helps y'all out with fishing in the rain. Make sure y'all are careful. That's the key thing, be careful. If you're going to the Got Fish Expo, go ahead and comment down. Let me know if you're going or not. See if I can meet you up at the at the expo. Uh, I'm, I'm super happy to uh, be back down here on the coast. It's awesome. I freaking love it down here. If you want to get together and fish, go ahead and comment. You can also reach to me at my email, texasredfishassassin at gmail.com. And uh, until next time, peace.